Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another soccer video where I talk about women's soccer and the NWSL. So a lot has been happening in women's soccer in the NWSL and in international soccer. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to be focusing on the big news that came out earlier this week. And that is Carly Lloyd announced her retirement at 39 from both international and club soccer. She will be retiring from international soccer after the four friendlies this upcoming fall. So it's two games against Paraguay and two against South Korea. She will also finish out this NWSL season with Gotham FC before retiring from club soccer. Carly Lloyd has 312 caps for the U.S. Women's National Team and scored 128 international goals. Carly Lloyd is definitely going to be missed. She has done so much for the U.S. Women's National Team, women's soccer, and is no doubt an amazing player. And she'll definitely go down in history as one of the greatest women's soccer players of all time. I'm kind of I'm kind of kind of not surprised that Carly Lloyd decided to retire. I do remember earlier an article came out before the Olympics around I think around the time of the send-off games where Carly Lloyd was talking about retiring or talking about retirement. She didn't really say when she was going to retire though. I was kind of guessing that I was kind of guessing it probably would have been after the Olympics and well look what happened. <laughs> anyway, when I was reading through that article, yeah, I got a sense that it was only a matter of time before Carly Lloyd decided to retire. And honestly, she's had such an amazing career. Carly Lloyd isn't the only player on the US Women's National Team also thinking about retirement. Megan Rapino was kind of unsure when it came to the idea of retiring from soccer. She said it would be something she would need to discuss with her wife, Sue Bird, and it would be something that she needed to think about a little more. So with Carly Lloyd's retirement and Megan Rapino's um, possible retirement still up in the air, where does this all leave the U.S. Women's National Team? Where does the U.S. Women's National Team go from here? I was thinking about this a lot after the Olympics when the national team won the bronze medal against Australia. With the U.S. Women's National Team coming in third at the Olympics and after what I thought was a kind of a lackluster performance, it's pretty clear something needs to be done when it comes to this national team moving forward. So. After some time of thinking about it and running ideas through my head about how to make this team better from working on getting and maintaining possession and control to bringing back Ashlyn Harris and to focusing on Jill Ellis's more aggressive and dominating style of play, I decided to focus on one thing. This one thing kept coming up while I was thinking about the US Women's National Team and while I was watching other women's national teams. So one of the biggest things the U.S. needs to start doing is working on developing younger players like, for example, Midge Pierce, Andy Sullivan, Bethany Balser, and so on. Yes, I do believe it's good to have a team mixed with older and younger players. But if the U.S. Women's National Team wants to stand a chance against teams like Germany, Australia, Sweden, and the Netherlands, to name a few, the U.S. Women's National Team needs to start incorporating younger players, getting them adjusted, and giving them more international playtime. So I've been keeping an eye on like the other women's national teams. One of the teams that I've been keeping an eye on is the Germany women's national team. Mainly because according to FIFA, they're right, they're currently um, number two right under the US. Germany's women's team is, as of right now, getting developed and 
looking at the roster of their last friendly, there is a really good mix of young and experienced players. Most of the players are between their early to late 20s. Some of these young players may not have as many caps, but it's clear Germany is currently working on building a team in preparation for not just the, the 2023 World Cup, but the 2022 Women's Euros, which I'm kind of looking forward to. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Germany does show up to the World Cup with a very fresh and tactical team. Also, the last time the U.S. Women's National Team, this is just a small thing that I noticed. The last time the U.S. Women's National Team took on Germany was in March 2018. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that was three years ago. Like, don't you, don't you think it's time to schedule a friendly with Germany? Again, according to FIFA, they're number two. I think it's kind of important to see where that team is at and see how the U.S. can do against them. All right, so another team that has been developing and that I've enjoyed watching is Australia. So before the Olympics, I look back at Australia's 2021 friendlies, and let's just say they were a mess at the start of the year, getting thrashed by Germany, the Netherlands, and even Denmark, surprisingly. Even though Australia was struggling at the start of the year, they got better leading up to the Olympics. Every friendly, every game was an improvement from the last. It was also very interesting to see how much Tegan Micah improved as a goalkeeper. So watching, watching her at the start of 2021, watching Tegan Micah at the start of 2021, and then at the Olympics, it was, it was, it was something. It's like she really developed. She was more confident. She was more confident playing in the Olympics than at the start. So that's a very awesome and amazing improvement. And she is probably going to be a really amazing goalkeeper as she gets older. And she also has Lydia, I think Lydia Will Williams <laughs> as as another Australian goalkeeper. So, you know, good mentor, I guess. So, as the time goes on, Australia and Tegan Micah, they're just going to get better. Australia posed as, posed as a challenge for the U.S. Women's National Team in the Olympics in the bronze medal match. And going forward, Australia could pose as an even bigger challenge to the U.S. in the World Cup. Much like Germany, Australia is still building and developing their national team. And I'm going to have something to drink because my throat is getting dry. <laughs> I swear, I'm not sick. <laughs> Alright, the next team. <laughs> then there is the Netherlands women's national team. Yeah, even though the U.S. has beaten the Netherlands in all their previous matches, it still wouldn't be a good idea to dismiss this team, especially when Mark Parsons, Portland Thorns manager, is going to be the new manager for the Dutch women's national team. On the other hand, former Netherlands women's national team manager, manager Serena Weigman, is going on to coach England's women's national team. And I don't even want to imagine the headache that's going to cause for the U.S. Women's National Team. And other teams, not just the U.S. Women's National Team, other teams going forward. Like, to put it simply, Serena Weichmann was very attack-heavy in focus when it came to the Dutch Women's National Team. And I wouldn't be surprised if she took that attack-heavy and attack-focused mindset and plan going forward with the England women's national team. Like, <laughs> if Serena does turn England's women's national team into a fully aggressive attacking team with a strong attack and a strong attacking midfield like she did with the Dutch women's national team, 
I mean, that's just going to be fun to watch. <laughs> I'm going to probably enjoy watching this England team. Honestly, I would love to see how this England team does under Serena Weigman. All right, so what does this all mean for the U.S. women's national team? To put it simply, Germany, Australia, and other national teams are currently working on developing and building their teams. They're calling up young players, players with little to no international experience, and seeing what works and what doesn't work, who's a good fit and who isn't. The U.S. women's national team needs to, excuse me, get started on that. Excuse me. St <clears throat> start, yeah, the U.S. needs to start, get started on that. Like, start incorporating younger players, inviting young and fresh players to the training camp and friendlies, and seeing how they perform in those friendlies. The U.S. has a chance to do that in the upcoming friendlies ab against Paraguay, Paraguay and South Korea, of, of course, as long as club duties don't get in the way. <laughs> but still, eventually the older and experienced players are going to retire someday. Maybe not now, maybe not tomorrow, but eventually it's going to happen. It's better to start incorporating these younger players early on and preparing them for the international stage instead of waiting like six or seven months before a major tournament or a World Cup. Chemistry takes a while to develop, and younger players and experienced players both need time to adjust to one another and the team as a whole. I also want to add, once again, that I'm not saying that the whole U.S. Women's National Team needs to be scrapped and replaced with completely new and young players. A lot of people have this idea and mindset that once a team gets rid of all of their old and experienced players and get a crap ton of young and fresh players, the team will play well and win all the games, all the tournaments, all the competitions, all the silverware, all the hardware. That's not always the case. Again, young and brand new players need time to adjust and build up their chemistry probably more so than a team of experienced players. Going forward, they may even lose a few games because they're not used to playing with each other. They're, they're probably going to lose a few games because they're still figuring things out as a team. When it comes to the U.S. Women's National Team, I don't think the team needs to completely scrap players like Kristen Press, Alex Morgan, or Tobin Heath. It's good to have a team with young and experienced players. I mean, Sweden, for example, has a good mix of young and older slash experienced players. And look how far that's got that and look how far that's gotten them. If older and experienced players are still able to keep up, perform, and do well in training and during games, they should still be able to remain on the team. Not only that, Having older and experienced players will help younger and newer players get adjusted more easily, which is why going forward, I do hope we get a U.S. women's team that does have a mix of both young and old slash experienced players. Anyway, there are other things that the U.S. women's national team could do to improve the team and get them ready for the 2023 World Cup. Like I said a little earlier about focusing on getting and keeping possession and going back to a more aggressive style of play, please. <laughs> anyway, it's easy to say the national team has plenty of time to prepare and they don't need to worry about the World Cup yet, but I do think it's important to figure out what's the next move for the U.S. women's national team. In 2022, Many of the European women's national teams are going to be participating in the Euros. Around this time, these teams will already have their national teams formed, built, and de developed. And even though the U.S. can't play in Euros for obvious reasons, we're not from Europe, <laughs> or we're not, we're not part of Europe, <laughs> the, the U.S. women's national team can still use this time to develop their own team bring on new players, bring on experienced players, and start getting them adjusted and ready. 
there's no harm in preparing early. Also, more friendlies, hopefully when things start to get better. <laughs> so friendlies with Brazil, Canada, or Mexico would be a good challenge for the US. Friendlies with France, Sweden, the Netherlands, or Germany before or after the Euros would also be a good test for the US women's national team and see what needs to be worked on and see how the US stacks up against them. So this is what I think the US women's national team can do to improve the team moving forward. I want to add that all this is just my opinion and observation and what I gathered from researching and observing the other women's national teams. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't want this video to go on too long. I'm glad it didn't. And that being said, that is all I have for you guys today or tonight whenever you watch this. And I'll see you all in the next one. Later.